So I think the advice for writing a great YA novel or any novel is you really want to do this because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of pain and it can pay off, but you really, tenacity will take you further than almost anything else. Um, my experience is don't give up. In terms of writing YA, um, when I started with this character, YA was not really the thing. I just came out of an MFA program. YA was kind of looked down upon. I think the first Harry Potter had just come out, uh, but it you know, wasn't what it is today. Um, and I did not, it was a writing prompt. I was in a class and I did not, I hate writing prompts, I hate doing them now, but every book I've ever started, started with a writing prompt. And I make people do it because I like watching people suffer. Um, especially since I have to suffer alone often. Um, but what basically happened was his voice came out and I said, you know, I couldn't fight her anymore because I don't like teenagers all that much. Um, I have one now, and I like them less, um, <laughs> because they're very honest, right? So they tell you what they think. You know, adults are a little bit forgiving. You can't get away with anything um, with uh, teens. And uh, the middle grade group, they're a little bit kinder, but by the time they hit 14, 15, forget it. So um, I just say do your research, make sure it's a book that you want to write. And a couple of years ago, was probably I co-teach a class and I'm always like the negative, like, oh, if you don't really want to do it, this sucks. And now there's so many opportunities for writers. So you can self-publish and you can make it work. And I had to do that. Can I tell yeah, that part of the story? Do, so I had one of these things, you, you have these nightmares about what's going to happen. Um, I don't know, your book will come out and I don't know. Um, the first woman president will be elected on that day, on the day that they release the book, or, or some big <laughs> thing on that book. You know, or you worry about a lot of things, but I didn't think that the publisher who first bought my book, before I went to self-publishing, um, loved the book. She loved it so much that before the contract was even signed, she had a copy edited, she had the title, she had a different cover, but everything was ready to go. And then I got an email that said, the president of the company just came into my office and said he's shutting us down. <laughs> And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> OK, so this is years of like working very hard, finally finding a publisher. And so after about two months of like, you know, bang, well, actually, probably two days, because I have one of those personalities of really not getting out of bed, I said, all right, so what do I do now? And I'm thinking to myself, well, I talked to this publisher, and she's looking for a job. And I'm saying, well, you know, why don't I self-publish? This was in 2011. And she's like, you know, I would tell you self-published, but with young adults, it's you got to get into schools, you need the hard copy. And it just didn't seem possible. So we, um, a good friend of mine uh, and I just started sending out to editors. Um, I had an agent before and no longer had her. And we were getting feedback that was like, I could use his reviews. I mean, and I know rejection. I've gotten much of it. But this was very positive rejection. And it just kept saying it wasn't right for our list. And then about six months into this process, an editor finally came forward and said, look, I love the book, but because it's around Egypt, it was about a girl and a revolution in Egypt, they're not going to touch it at our house. And I, so we found out it was going to be a hard sell, no matter where we went. So somebody um, who cared about me deeply, and I think cared about my future because he's my ex-husband, um, and was at the time, and I think you know he wanted to make sure that uh, our son could go to college. Um, he fronted some money, and we started what we thought was a small little publishing house, thinking we were going to do many books. Well, it took a lot of money and time and effort to get the first book out, and we went old school. We had a print run, we had the ebook, we had a lawyer, we had we copy edited again. I mean, we did the whole thing. We sold. A good number in some worlds, uh, but not enough to keep it alive without more money. And I, I, the publicist cost more money than anything, and she was great and affordable, but it was very, still very hard. Now, with all this being said, there's a whole new way of doing self-publishing that I would tell you to do it differently, but um, it didn't exist then. And when I was, you know, the book was doing okay. We, I did a book tour, which I wouldn't say you need anymore. Now it's all blog tours. Um, but I, you know, traveled around the country. The book was in Barnes and Noble. Actually, by the way, if you have a Nook, it's $2.99 right now on the deal, which that publisher could get you. I couldn't get that myself. 
Um, and so what finally happened was I just thought the book was just going to eventually die. It's too much because of distribution. At that time, distribution, well, it is a very big deal. And you couldn't go to the big places because you needed to be with. So I had to go to a small dis a distribution company who took on smaller books. And it was a much bigger deal. So they were, so I had to do all the work with my partner ourselves. And then I um, was ready to just give up on this book that I'd spent years not only writing, but then trying to sell. And, and then I met uh, a fabulous person who just happened to come to talk to my class, and I won't mention her name, but she said, yeah, let me read the book. Maybe I can you know, give you some advice. And she happened to like the book, and she claims that due to luck, she was in the right place at the right time when a former editor of Sourcebook said, that sounds like something I'd be interested in, and that woman bought it. Well, of course, the joke is that a month after she bought it, buys it, she leaves <laughs> that uh, house. But the new editor was great anyway, and it worked out. Um, so this book has had two lives. If you know me on Facebook, I actually, you probably are tired of hearing about Rebels by Accident, <laughs> because uh, I've, like, it seems like it's a new book that keeps coming out, but it's the same book. I'm happy to say that I finally finished the, uh, the companion book is finally finished, and we'll see what happens with that. But my advice would be is don't let anyone, you're going to get a lot of no's. So you've got to just be willing to take it. And, but if you don't, after a while, if you get the 100 no's and you really believe in your project, then actually get the right team, because it does take a team, self-publish, do whatever you can, but don't give up. Um, and if you think it's going to happen overnight, it does happen for some people, but for most it doesn't. Um, then you might want to go into another field. But, um, <laughs> but other than that, um, I really would rather be a stand-up comic, but that's going to be when I'm um, 60. I've got eight more years for that. 